About four weeks ago, a man and his wife visited my wife and me, and we were having conversations about different things. When we started talking about money, I knew I had to keep silent and listen to him because my opinion about money and his are the direct opposite. For example, he believes that sin goes with money, while I believe that money is neutral. He believes that you are close to heaven if you are poor. I believe the opposite. He once told me how he hated a man who has a pet, because to him, having such an expensive pet means that he is wasting money. Funny enough, I have an aquarium in my home, which means he won't like how I waste money to feed fishes that will never become foods. Do you know what is ironical about this man? He worked in one of the most expensive cities in my country and since he could not afford the rent, school fees and other expenses that come with living in a city, he left his family in a town, two states away, and usually go to visit them once in a month. Why would you be working like a slave and still believe that money is not important? How would you be willing to sacrifice your family for work, yet you think and say getting rich is evil? Okay, what is the point of this story? You see, I can predict your future if I can listen to the words you use very often because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What you say often will determine your future, not because there is anything magical in words, but because the words you use regularly is as a result of your mindset and your mindset determines your assets or lack of it. Now, let me share with you the three powerful words you have to use every day of your life if you want to be successful in life. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss other exciting videos like this. Number one, no. Steve Jobs said, People think focus means saying yes to the things you've got to focus on, but that's not what it means at all. It means saying no to the hundred other good ideas that there are. Most people think that life is about knowing what to do, but it's often about knowing what not to do because most times, you won't know what you should do, but what not to do is usually very clear. Take for instance, after studying accounting in school for some time, I discovered that I couldn't be an accountant or even an employee. What business can I do? How do I get money to finance my idea? How would I succeed? I had no idea. But I said no to school anyway, so I can figure out other yeses I need to figure out. Most people lack such courage, and that's why they are poor. The truly successful people use the word no every day. No to little things. No to time-wasting activities. No to negative people. No to a hundred business ideas that will distract us from the concept we are working on right now. Kelly Corrigan said, One friend told me that her one big takeaway from three years and $11,000 of therapy was learning how to say no. That's how important the word no could be. You see, most things in life don't worth it. Most people don't worth your friendship. Most ideas don't worth pursuing. Most internet content don't worth reading or watching. If you don't say no every day, you will end up miserable because you waste too many time and emotions on little things. 2. How Ben Carson's mother used to work in the homes of the rich. Then at a point, she discovered that every rich person she worked with had a library, even though this wasn't a normal thing amongst the poor. She got back home and convinced her children that they had to start reading every day. That was how she raised one of the most celebrated neurosurgeons in the world, Ben Carson. I watched a video last week of a man whose library worth over $500,000. Charles T. Munga said, In my whole life, I have known no wise people who didn't read all the time. The rich always ask how. How was that made? How did that man become successful? How did that man do it? I have in my library all sorts of books. The Biography of Coca-Cola, Biography of Toyota Company, History of 20th Century, History of Ancient Egypt, Steve Jobs and How Apple Was Founded, Biography of Phil Knight and How Nike Was Established, many books about marketing, psychology, and history. Why do I read so much? Well, I use the word how a whole lot. If someone achieves something extraordinary, I want to know how he did it. If a company becomes successful, I want to know how they did it. It's called curiosity, and you need it to become successful. Use the word how every day. Be curious, seek to know, ask questions, search and knock, look for answers, and you will find some. Three, assets. Every time I need to spend money, I have to ask myself, is what I am about to buy an asset? If such thing has the possibility of making me money in the future, yes, that's an asset. If it can help me become more productive, yes, that's an asset. If it can make me healthier, yes, that's an asset. Not just money. When I wake up in the morning, I make sure I don't consume comedy videos on the internet. I don't listen to the news in the morning. And I don't do anything except my number one task for the day. 
Yes, like everyone, I consume entertainment content. But I only do that after I've used up my morning energy. An asset is a powerful word the rich use every day and you can use it for every area of your life. Take for instance, I just let go of a friend who has been in my life for over a decade because I sat down and wondered what he is adding to my life. He talks a lot and does nothing. He makes silly decisions and never rushes to do anything. He is not an asset in my life. And if anyone or anything isn't an asset, you can be sure they are a liability. Say no every day to little things and don't forget that most things are little. Use the word how every day. Seek to know. Search the hidden treasure. Look for wisdom. Read boring books that no one reads. Study history because it gives us insight into the future. Study the lives of those who have achieved greatness because it gives you insight on how you can do what they did. Understand the difference between assets and liabilities. Start with your money. Pay attention to how you spend your money. Buy assets and avoid as much liabilities as your ego can allow. Then look at your friends and review them. If anyone is not adding to you, then they are probably taken away from you. Then look at your time. This is perhaps more important. See to it that you don't make entertainment, gossips and other little things the priority of your life. Yes, you need entertainment, but you don't need it in the morning and you don't need 5 hours of it every day. If this video makes sense to you, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe if you've not done so. We love you.